This is the longest short scene in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's time we quit this place. I had to fit that in there. Quit this place from this since we had it right. in the, the first trailer. <laughs> I can't quit you. <laughs> I remember when we first, the very, very beginning of this, when we like did the first table read through this and everything, and we talked about. I asked if there was going to be a moment of just a, a, a light shining through in, in, in this darkness, and you talked about this scene, and at that point it was just really kind of just real easy brush strokes of, of what it was going to be, and it really came into fruition and became this, this... Well, all the characters here have their guard down. It's kind yeah. of unique, because usually somebody's lying or somebody's hiding something, right. and here's like, everybody has their guard down. And they're just talking about motorcycles. And you were really giving too on this. We spent a lot of time on this, and there was this one scene where you just kind of let me ramble about mm -hmm. you know, we, to where we really feel like we're coming midway into a conversation. I don't even remember what was said, but it was just this cool moment. Well, you went more into the details of like with Tommy and where you went and the states and yeah. all that stuff. I think that really helped kind of make this, the, the following takes much more natural. Right, without all the rest of that yeah. stuff, the preamble being there. But I love the turn that he gives right here. It's like the kids have gone to bed now, and we can yeah. we can just talk like adults. Worst part about it all. Animation and lighting, right? If you don't capture these looks in the eyes, this scene doesn't work. Right. The thing that I love about this well, is that he's set up a little office for himself, kind of like what Henry did. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's this. What are you doing? I'm being official, trying to be a grown up. He's still a kid, and we see it in this moment. I really enjoyed working with Brandon and Najee. Just having them on set was so much fun. They're so Naji especially, dudes. like Naji's Naji's hilarious. We're doing this crazy scene, and we like cut, and then he's like just starting dancing or, or yeah. singing, singing whatever you know YouTube hot song at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> you know, song bombing us all day. They were so much fun. I just adore them too. Is everything all right? You, you, you got an opportunity to put so much of you into Ellie. That's just because yeah. I can't write, so I would just listen to Ashley talk, and I was like, oh, that's a good line. <laughs> Have a good night. That's giving me way too much credit. How is it that you're never scared? It's like says that I'm not? putting up the defense, making like making joke of it, as, as Ellie does. Yeah. And then seeing when she needs to, because that's the only way she's going to cheer him up, she's going to open up to him. And also, she kind of throws out that bone, like, you know, scorpions are pretty creepy. That's not what I want to talk about. Uh, being by myself. Which, again, all this stuff she's saying here plays into what happens later when she finds out Joel's trying to give her up, giving her away to Tommy. Yeah. Those things out there. What if the and it's kind of the same thing we're seeing with Tess. To where she was, again, you, she knows what's going on, he knows what's going on, but it's looking externally for some kind of either comfort or hope or answer or something. And then they just always come up empty. I guess one thing I'm just thinking about now, which is all the stuff Sam is going through because he's bitten, is probably the stuff Ellie went through when she was first bitten because she thought she was going to turn. And it just happens that she was immune. But So she that's what she kind of... Do you think that's true? <laughs> All these realizations she's had. I go back and forth. I mean, I'd like to believe it. That's a powerful thing for a, essentially a it's kind of sad because that's not what Sam wants to hear. He right. wants yeah. to hear that it's all going to be all right. right. But she doesn't realize that's what No, he death is death is terrible. It's a horrible, painful process and you're all alone, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I almost forgot. If he doesn't know about it, he can't take it away. All right. This did make me sad because... I'll see you tomorrow. You know, he spent that whole night alone. Mm -hmm. Like... Oh, yeah. Know, Henry didn't go back in there. I let him sleep in, just like... Yeah, let oh, him sleep in. Oh. And that was the last conversation he had. And that always made me so sad after I read that. Because I was like, oh. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. And what would have happened if Henry had gone in there? I mean, Damn. the fact that he... 
that Henry wasn't there, I mean, plays into you know the, the culmination of this scene where he's just racked with guilt. I mean, one thing we're very conscious of when putting the story together is we would have these really kind of dramatic moments that change the characters significantly, and then we would cut to some more time in the future. Yeah. And you'll, so you don't get to see right afterwards what happened to it, and then you get hints of how, they, how this affected the relationship, which is what you get into the, the next gameplay sequence. And this whole thing is, um, it's a huge change in Joel here, because now he sees this is what's going to happen to me. The same thing that's happening to Henry right now is what would happen to me if I'm going to keep going and let Ellie get hurt. Yeah. And it's like, he's going to, after this moment, he makes the choice, like, I need to give her to Tommy. Oh my God. See you. Oh no. I have no idea what that would do to a person to actually see that, to have to do that. You know, I remember talking with Brandon about this when he's saying it's all your fault. He's not talking to Joel, he's talking to himself. Yeah. Okay, okay, easy. Yeah, the thing that's cool with this piece, Gustavo's music, is that you're carrying that weight. You're carrying the weight of that emotion of everything just happened onto the next scene, which even though they might not be thinking about Henry and Sam right this moment, but it's just that feeling is lingering going forward. 